Welcome back. Well, it's a warm day, but it's not as ridiculously hot as it was last week when it was up like almost at 100 degrees, and that's without any heat index. But Audie doesn't care for the hot weather. So when it gets really warm, he has two modes. He either lies in the middle of the floor on his back with his little paws stretched out so he can catch breeze on his tummy, or he's all over me because it's hot and he expects me to do something about it. It's like, no, it's hot. What are you going to do for a cat? It's like, well, I'd prefer not to have to snuggle you right now. So he doesn't take well to that. And he's moved off my lap next to me on the chair. Um, probably because I've got a fan blowing in this direction and he likes the cool breeze. But I think we are certainly going to be treated to some Audi time today. Also, we're going to be treated to some more buys from Bedford Antiques from the most recent trip. So we'll get into this as soon as we come are picking up at Bedford Antiques uh, at the Lutz booth. Now, Lutz Antiques has their own large warehouse um, shop. I'm not sure what you'd call it. And you know, because you've seen me film in there. It's huge. They've got all kinds of just enormous pieces of furniture in there. And they have little booths elsewhere as well. And Bedford Antiques is one of them. So, I went over to the Lutz booth. By the way, it turns out there are actually two Lutz booths there, side by side. And I simply walked into the first one and thought, oh, well, they've changed things up. Where's the furniture? I don't understand this. What's going on? And then, of course, I went next door and saw the furniture and felt much more comfortable. But the booth that they have now has oh, smaller porcelain items, much more my speed. So I was able to pick up a few things there. So let's take So it's been a couple of weeks since I've stopped at the Lutz booth. See, that's their sign up in the corner. And things have changed. Usually it's full of furniture in here, but now it's full of my kind of stuff, little porcelain collectibles. So we have this little creamer, $5, very sweet. This is an egg vase. It's marked on the bottom Napco wear, and Napco was uh, a very popular Japan importer in the mid-century. So this is coming with us. Interestingly enough, it's marked Napco wear, but it's not marked Japan. And $4 again, this is a little, I don't know a little holder of some sort in the shape of a clown, beautifully painted, bright colors. So those three pieces are going in my bag. So we're making out from Lutz today. Well, the first piece was that really interesting little pitcher slash creamer. And I like little creamers, especially if they're in good traditional designs because they're remarkably useful. You can do just about anything with a creamer. You can literally turn it into a coffee cup, pour your coffee and drink it out. Um, I've never actually done that, but I see no reason why you couldn't. So I find them just wonderfully useful and they sell quickly and well for me at my Etsy shop. So a good bargain on a creamer, I'm always going to go for that. 
the odd little broken egg vase. Uh, that, as I mentioned when I was filming, is from a company called Napco. They were an importer of Japan ware. So I found it interesting that Napco ware was on the bottom. That's one of the company did business as Napco, um, which was the NAP company. Then there was like Napco ware and they did Napco products and they had all sorts of sort of subsidiary company names. Everything came from Japan. Napco did not import from anywhere else. So I was rather surprised not to see Japan on the bottom. However, Napco is one of those companies that often used a combination of an imprint and then a glue-on sticker. And very often those stickers disappeared over the years. And it's embarrassing to me because, you know, now I look for those stickers, but I was one of those people, I still am, if I go into the store and buy something new, which is very rare because I'd rather get something old with a little more appeal and a little more style. First thing I do is take off every sticker. It's like, boy, I, I'm, I'm surprised I even wait until I get home to take the stickers off. So... I have to assume that back in the 50s and 60s, there were people just like me who would buy something and the very first thing they would do was would be scrub off that Made in Japan sticker. Much to my dismay now that I'm looking for them. You'd think that would be enough to encourage me to stop doing it. It isn't. Uh, that is an interesting piece. Napco was a, a a well-known importer, and they were more on the high end. Now, for Japanese imports, the high end was not unusually high. It just meant the Napco ware probably found its way into department stores as opposed to five and dime stores. It's higher quality um, figurines, porcelain vases, uh, dishes. Yeah. I was about to say China ware, but I wasn't sure, given the fact that we're talking about Japanese imports, I wasn't sure that would be clear. But dishes, plates, um, service items of porcelain. So I'm always glad to get my hands on Napco pieces because they were well done. And they've held up very well over the years. And the final piece was that clown. I have decided the clown holds a potted plant. You know, you go to the store, you get a plant in a little four-inch pot. I've decided that's clearly what this clown was meant to do. He's supposed to be holding something. So I am going to just start to call him uh, a plant pot holder because his little depression is not large enough for him to be a planter. It wouldn't hold enough dirt. But his little clown arms can hold a pot. Um... I did not get him for the functionality anywhere near as I got him for the, that beautiful airbrushed glazing work, um, especially the pink and yellow combination. Gee, it always makes me smile. Very mid-century um, and very Japanese import. So glad to see that. Uh, the total there was uh, $13. Uh, the creamer was five. The other two pieces were four each. So that was not a bad little haul. Um, I'm going to have to make a point of spending a little more time in their booth because uh, I like the kind of porcelain they have to offer. And heaven knows I like those prices. So I have a feeling that this new little Lutz porcelain booth is going to become my favorite hangout. Um, next up, I went over to another booth, and I talk about this all the time. Some of my favorite booths are the ones with real good bargains and then wildly high-priced items. 
uh, I, if I can't figure out how the dealer is pricing their stuff, I love them because I'm pretty sure they can't figure it out either. And I'm just as likely to get great prices on really good items as I am to see really good items that are priced higher than I would like. So always, always a mixed bag. And you have to be prepared to pick up every little thing and turn it over for the price tag. So we've been in here before, um, and this one, just walking past the booth, they caught me like that. All right, let's take a look. So I've done okay at this little booth in the past. Um, it's one of those mixed bag places. Some good deals, some not so good deals, but we're finding some good deals here today. Five dollars, this is a pretty little geisha wear bowl. Very nicely executed. One of the problems we see with a lot of geisha wear is it, it looks like it was painted by a blind toddler. Oh, and I get to say that because I was once a blind toddler myself. Uh, this, no, this is a very nice paint job. So, yeah, this is a good bargain. So, we had this wonderful little geisha wear bowl just sitting there. And uh, as I hope you were able to see in the film, it was beautifully executed. That's unusual with geisha wear. It, it ran the gamut. Some of it was really fine, fine quality, extremely well done. Geisha wear was Japan's version of rose medallion porcelain although not to be confused with the Japanese-made rose medallion. This was sort of their cultural interpretation of a Chinese design. It, I have seen geisha wear pieces that are just stunning, really beautiful, flawlessly executed. I have also seen geisha wear pieces. I did a video about this. It had to be more than two years ago where I had some geisha wear pieces that I got them in a large group. I pulled out a few pieces and said, I'm not even listing these for sale. These, are, you can't sell them. These are unsaleable. They were items with no damage. It's just that they were so poorly executed. And one of our viewers wrote in and said, if you're gonna throw them away, you know, I'll take them off your hands. Let me pay you the postage. And I was like, hallelujah. I don't like to throw things away, but I couldn't believe anybody would even bother to pay postage on these things. Obviously, he was a collector. He wanted them. I hope he wasn't too disappointed, but I, and I didn't mislead him in any way. It's like, these are going in the trash. These are terrible. Ick, I, I, I can't bear the thought of you know, selling them under my own name. I'd have to change my name to, you know, like, you know, Cheater McGee in order to sell them. But people are drawn to geisha wear for a variety of different reasons. I'm not sure what appealed to that man about those dreadful little pieces. As I say, I hope he's happy. But this piece was really nice. Five dollars. Wow. Absolutely. Then, as soon as I, because I stopped immediately when I saw that, I had to grab it and stick it in my bag right away before anybody else came along and snatched it out from under me. Went in, took a look around. Now, here's what I mean about the difference in prices. Let's take a look at this piece. Same shop. Well, this is a beautiful Noritake piece. I love the color combination on this. But at $16, it's a little high, so I'm putting it back. Now, that beautiful little Noritake plate is absolutely, objectively speaking, worth $16 in relation to the Geisha Wear Bowl. 
the quality is probably three times as high, even though the geisha wear piece was very fine quality. Noritake is top of the line. So it's beautiful. It was a rare color combination. Um, just really, really nice. So why do I think that $16 price is too much? Because in my experience, no one is going to pay three times as much for a piece of 20th century Japanese porcelain if they can get uh, a piece that they may find more interesting, more attractive, you know, the geishas, whatever. I don't know what it is that, that people would decide one over the other for. Everyone has their own criteria. If I put both of those pieces in my Etsy shop at the same price, I promise you, the geisha wear bowl would sell immediately. The Noritake piece would have to wait around for the right buyer. That's why. And it's not because that Noritake piece was overpriced. It's overpriced for me for resale purposes. But if I went in and saw that beautiful piece, $16 as a retail purchase, I would consider it a buy. But I just don't think there are enough people out there who understand the value differences between geisha wear and noritake to justify such a, a difference in prices. I really don't. Um, you have to remember that you're selling to your market. If your market is well educated, the better pieces will fetch more money. If your market is not well educated, things that are going to go for the high dollar value are things like dragonware. And dragonware is not inherently high quality stuff. It really isn't. Mass produced for the export market, that will that will sell over much higher quality pieces uh, because people it appeals to people. What can I say? People like the dragons. Who knows? But you have to know your market. And in a market like what we have locally, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and we are, I want to say we're a secondary market. We're not. We are like a tertiary market. The secondary market is like Lala compared to us. We, we are a small town market. You're not going to find experts on Japanese porcelain here. You're really not. It's just, you know, you need to go into a larger city, a larger marketplace, or uh, an area where they have a strong Asian community, because very often they will know the pieces and the value, having grown up with them. So that I thought was interesting. I thought I would share that with you. Now, obviously, I look at them. The Noritake piece, to me, is far and away the winner. But I promise you, if I put both pieces in my Etsy shop, it's the Noritake piece that would wait to sell. The Geisha Wear piece will get snapped up almost at once. So, oh, by the way, uh, this is just sort of an open offer. Check it out. I, I will make, make a point of listing that piece and watch how fast it sells. People love that stuff. They really, really do. So, know your market. Um, next up, this is another Japan piece. But I wasn't 100% sure it was a Japan piece when I first saw it. Take a look. This is a booth I go through quite often. Um, it's very nice to shop in here because the booth itself is clean, well organized, but I don't often find things of interest. I did today though. Let me see if I can get the glare out of this. There we go. 
Uh, this is 750. It's a nice Japan plate. We're looking at about eight inches, and that's coming home with me. Well, that plate clearly marked Made in Japan, blue and white. The design was taken from the Chinese willow ware or canton ware, blue and white designs. That particular design, I mean the elements of it, I can I can pull pieces out and show you one after another. It's the same as pieces made in China. I even have pieces made in England in that same design. So I see the design, I know what it is, but boy, I gotta turn that plate over to tell you where it was made. The reason I thought that plate was a good deal at 750 was because the large size and and remember your customer is always going to be thinking like this and because as it happens i have a great many smaller pieces in that pattern or complementary patterns and i could stand a few larger plates so that I can do larger tidbit trays. Just that simple. I happened to need plates of that particular size. Ordinarily, I would look at that and say, well, gee, at $750, that is an awful lot to pay for a plate that's going into a tidbit tray. Because remember, when I do a tidbit tray, I need at least two, usually three plates, sometimes a little fancy topper. You start doing the math, and, you know, and you realize that, boy, suddenly, you know, I'm starting to lose money on them. No. Because I had been able to get the other blue plates in that general pattern at such a good bargain, mostly because I got a whole stack of them from Paul a few months ago, as you may remember, it made sense to me. But that's another you know, reselling lesson you never really know why someone will pay what they're willing to pay for something. Uh, I had a specific reason for wanting, not that particular plate, but a plate in that style, in that size. That same plate in a smaller size, even at a less, lesser price, I probably would have walked away from because I don't happen to need them. So. You never really know. Thought I would share that one with you. And let's take a look, because while we are on Japan, and this is just sheer coincidence, I took the films in order. So these are all in the order in which I photographed them in the store. Next thing up, also Japan. So this is one of Paul's cubbies, and we've been in here before. We go in here a lot. Occupied Japan pieces, four, three, two, and they are all coming home with me. Well, I have to apologize. I just realized I've been sitting here for the last 20, 30 minutes pulling the hair out of my eyes, and I do apologize for that. I know it's distracting, but... It's either here with the fans and the hair or in the other room with the air conditioning and the noise. So yeah, summer in Pennsylvania. Anyway, I'm sorry. I hope it's not so distracting that it's driving you nuts. Um, those occupied Japan pieces at some point, I'm guessing around six or eight months ago, Paul apparently fell into a sale of occupied Japan pieces. When that happens, he buys out estates, he'll end up with collections. And I look around for these interesting occupied Japan pieces. Um, in part, I will use them on tidbit trays, but also occupied Japan has its own collector's market. The, the pieces I picked up, that was um, three pieces for $9. It was like um, what was it? Uh, two, two, three, and four dollars, respectively. Good deal. Um, 
if they end up selling independently, which is possible, I may end up just listing, especially the larger piece. The others, the little fish, that's probably going to go on to a tidbit tray. All I need to do is find the right combination of colors and it'll look fabulous. So, and also because it's this big, I can afford to stick it in a box and hold on to it indefinitely. It will not drive me nuts, you know, to have it hang around the way a larger piece might. So I was glad to get that. I always check out that little cubby of Paul's. It's a, a turn of the century oak curved front china cabinet. Very simple piece, a low end piece. When that china cabinet came out, that was the china cabinet that, or display cabinet, that would have gone into the home of a working class family, no two ways around it. This was not an elegant piece, but they are beautiful. Um, usually mass produced in the Grand Rapids area, but solid wood, very nice, affordable. Um, that particular type of furniture is just, oh, I can't say enough about it because uh, advances in machine production of furniture had put high quality furniture in the hands of the working classes, which is just wonderful. Glad to see it. So I do love that little cubby all by itself, but we go in there frequently to see what's going on with Paul's stuff. Now, um, I had I have more I wanted to show you, but already we are hitting the end of our time limit. Um, so I'm going to have to throw the rest onto another video. Sorry about that. Okay, have a terrific day going out. We are going to take a look at one of our slideshows, um, probably JLS's sun, uh, Sunsets Horizons. It was water and sunsets and all that happy stuff. Remember, this is the slideshow that got us started on this. And uh, I always, it's always going to be one of my special favorites. So we're going to have our moment of peaceful Zen and I will see you all tomorrow.